Hi everyone and welcome to this video. We'll continue our series Tableau for Beginners and today we'll look at data preparation in Tableau Desktop. We'll cover the following concepts. The importance of data preparation, best practices for preparing data, and then we'll go through a demo on actual data preparation in Tableau Desktop. Now let's look at the importance of data preparation in Tableau. So why should you prepare your data? The first reason is data quality. So data preparation allows you to address issues such as missing values, outliers, inconsistent formats, and data errors. By cleaning and validating the data, you can improve its quality and reliability thus leading to more accurate and trustworthy insights. Now, another reason to prepare your data is data integration. So usually data comes from multiple sources with different structures, formats, and naming conventions. Preparing your data helps you in integrating and blending these disparate data sets into a unified view. And this enables comprehensive analysis and visualizations. Now, another reason to prepare your data is data transformation. So preparing your data allows you to transform the data to meet specific requirements. This includes tasks such as aggregating data, creating calculated fields, reformatting your data, and deriving new variables. By carrying out these transformations, you can shape your data to support the desired analysis and visuals in W. Now, another reason to prepare your data is performance optimization. Preparing your data involves optimizing the structure and size to enable it to um, give better performance in W. This may include removing unwanted columns removing duplicates, aggregating your data at appropriate levels, and choosing the right data types. And you find out that optimized data can result in faster query response times and smoother interactions in Tableau. And one more reason to prepare your data is data security and privacy. Now, data preparation plays a very crucial role in ensuring data security and privacy. So you can anonymize or encrypt sensitive information, or you can control access to sensitive data, and also um, adhere to data governance policies. And all these can be done right by preparing your data and ensuring that it meets the right standards. So next, let's look at the best practices for preparing your data. So the first step is um, to clean your data. The next best practice is to standardize your data, normalize your data, choose the right data type, use meaningful field names, avoid using merge cells. And when preparing your data, fact tables are usually unioned. So you combine or append fact tables and dimension tables, on the other hand, you join them. They are usually joined. And lastly, right, you keep your data structure simple. So let's look at the first um, practice, clean up your data. So you have a table showing you um, um, sales values, other ID down to other dates. And if you look closely at the data, right, you find out that you have duplicates. So you have John Doe multiple times, the same product name multiple times. Also, you have missing values. You have those cells that have empty values. Also, you have spelling mistakes. Instead of Microsoft Word with an O, you have WRD instead of Word, another spelling mistake. So all these rights, they constitute dirty, dirty data. Now, after cleaning, you can see that we've taken off the duplicates, 
we've replaced missing values. So this can involve reaching out to um, those in charge of the data, right? And try to extract those data. Or you can use statistical methods to replace replace missing values. Also, we've fixed the spelling error. Now you have word in place of WRD. And now you have your clean data. So you can analyze this and come up with relevant insights to your project. Now the next step, the next best practice is to standardize your data. So you have this um, sample data set. And if you look very well, you see that the dates, you have inconsistent um, formats. So you have um, year, you have month, day, year. But the, the ones that are highlighted, right, they are rather in the day, month, year format. But the rest um, dates, they are in the month, day, year format. So that's, that's inconsistent formats. You need to uni um, have a uniform format. And then you also have inconsistent naming. So while the other product names, they start with a capital letter, right? Uppercase and then lowercase. So all the other product names, they are in proper case, but the ones highlighted, apples, oranges, right? You see that what they have, the first two, they are all lowercase, but you want to have a uniform um, data format, right? And then you also have inconsistent units. So for the unit of measurement column, you see that what you have different units, boxes, um, cases, etc. But you want to have just one unit one consistent unit, right? That will help you make better analysis and insights. So all these constitute that data. Now, to make this clean, right, you have to standardize your data, the same data types, the same formats, the same units of measurements. And now you have what's the clean um, data, right? You can see that was all the dates, they are now fixed. Yeah, they are now in the words month, day, year format. All the product names are now in proper case. And you have one unit across all the products. So you have, you have um, IBS, LBS across all the um, products. Next, next best practice is to normalize your data. So here you have a table, which is denormalized. And the normalized means that um, you have one large table that contains all your fields, your dimensions, your facts, they are in one large table. However, the normalized, the normalized um, formats, right? You break this into facts and dimensions. So when you compare the table on the, on the left-hand side, the denormalized table, and the right-hand side, the normalized table, you find out that the left-hand, you have just one table with all the fields. But here, we've broken this down into the central fact table, the other table, then you have a location dimension. So anything that consigns location rights will be put in this table. Anything that consigns products will be in the products table. Anything that consigns dates, the dates table, and customers will be in the customers table. So you have a normalized um, version of this data, right? And this is, this, this helps ensure efficient and effective analysis. There's faster performance, and also it gives you um, better understanding right, of your data, how they are related and how to manipulate it and come up with um, better insights. So it's recommended right, to normalize your data where possible. And then the next um, best practice is to choose the right data type. So here you have different data types. You have Boolean, you have dates, dates time, special numeric values and string and examples right for boolean it can be true or false so this constitutes the boolean data type and for dates right month day year right these are date values you also have this this time values right date and time together so the dates and the time of the day together that's date time values then you have special values right these are these are like geographical points so you have this latitude and longitude here, right? An example of spatial values in W. You also have 
numbers. Now, numbers can be whole numbers. That's integers or decimal. So whole numbers, right? You have three. You also have decimal numbers, right? Decimal places. And lastly, you have string, right? These are text data. So you have a text that says Tableau for beginners. These are examples of data types, right? That you encounter in Tableau. So it's best to choose the right data type, right? For each kind of data you're working with. The next tip is, the next best practice is to use meaningful field names. So yeah, you have this table, right? And if you look at the column headers, you have unclear field names. And when you look at the clean version, right, it's not properly named. And anyone can look at this and make sense of the data, right? Other ID, customer name. When you compare this to cost name, you see that, well, this makes more sense. This is more intuitive. So you have um the clean fashion right meaningful field names compared to the initial one which is unclear and next next best practice is to avoid using merge cells and this applies when you're working with spreadsheets data sources like excel google sheets avoid working with the merge cells so here right you can see all the all the all the cells in red they are all merge cells right so they're merged together so when you clean this up, right, you see that what they are now unmatched and the values are now what replicated across all those cells. So it's best to what clean up data, right, and unmatch any cells that are matched in your spreadsheet data source. And when you're working with fact tables, right, so fact tables, just to um, explain what they are, right, fact tables are tables that contain actual measurements, right, of events. So it could be sales, anything that consigns sales, right? Maybe quantity of sales, um, sales um, amount, profit, etc. Things like that would be in a fact table, right? So when you're working with fact tables, you usually union them. So in Tableau, right, union is a feature that allows you combine multiple tables with similar data structures into a single table. And when you union tables in Tableau, right, you stack them upon on top of each other. And you have a larger table with larger number of rows. So to illustrate this, right, the image here, you have two tables. And you can see, right, the union table here, you now have what? The first table, three rows. Second table, three rows. When you union them together, you now have what? One table with what? Six rows, right? Three plus three. Union, you have what? Six rows with the same number of columns, right? That's how the, that's how the union, union um feature works in Tableau. And we'll see this in subsequent lessons. And then for dimension tables, right? So dimension tables are tables that describe the facts. So things like who bought what, where was this um order made from, right? So um who, right, where, how those kinds of questions are answered by your dimension table. So in Tableau, joins refer to the process of combining data from two or more tables based on a common field. And Tableau offers different kinds of joins, inner join, left join, right join, full outer join, which determine how the data from these tables would be included in the resulting view. So if you want to learn more about joins, right, I will link a video on my SQL playlist that goes through all the kinds of joins in, in SQL. And that will help you better understand joins in W. And we'll also go through um, examples of these right in the next lesson. So this is what um, a pictorial representation of what joins look like, right? So you have a central table here, others. And based on the common field, so you have customer ID here and customer ID here, right? So you join them based on the similar field. Same thing, location table, others table, you have similar field, location ID and location ID. So you join this based on what the common field. Others calendar, right? You join them based on what? You have a date key. You have other dates and ship dates. So you can join by either of these date fields. And then you have what? Products orders, right? Similar field is what? Products ID and product ID. So you join them based on the common field, right? 
And based on your analytical needs, you might use an inner join, left join, right join, or full outer join as a case um, might be. So let's look at actual um, data preparation in Tableau Desktop. So um, it's important to note that Tableau Desktop has limitations, right? It's not um, the ideal tool to prepare data for Tableau. In our first video, we saw that Tableau had different um, components. And in the Tableau ecosystem, Tableau prep is what you use to clean up and shape your data, right? So Tableau Desktop allows basic data shaping. However, when you're doing complex transformations, these are better handled with tools like Tableau prep, if available. Now Tableau prep requires a license, so it's not free, right? So most times you might do, if, you're, if you don't have a license, you might work with what other free tools like Excel, or maybe if you're working with a data, database source, you can use your queries, right? Or create views that help you manipulate and clean up your data. So you have other tools like Alteryx, et cetera. These are all tools that um, developers can use, right? To clean up and ship their data. So advanced data cleaning features provided by these tools help you ensure data cleanliness, accuracy, and optimize data analysis and visualization in Tableau Desktop. So let's look at an actual demo. So for our first demo, right, we'll do um, data preparation in Tableau Desktop. And for these, right, we'll work with um, a sample sales report. So this is a sales report, right? And you have data for different product IDs across different regions, right? And then you have, um, so this is not in the best structure, right? If you look very well, you see that what you have, um, east, west, north, south, west, right? And then total together. Then you have product ID on this column. You also have what's this subheaders also. So these are segments, right? Consumer, corporate, then total. Add this together, you get this, right? Together, add together, you get this also. Just like that till the end. And then in the product ID column, you also have um, subtotals, right? So all this, when you combine all these together, right? All these values together, when you combine together, you get the total for furniture, right? Same thing here too. When you combine together, total for office. So you see that it's not really um, structured, right? For BI tools like W. You have to clean this up and ensure it's in the right structure. So our ideal structure, right, looks like this. So this, this, this table here, right, product ID, the region, the segments and the sales. This is the best way, right, to have this data in BI tools like W. And you cannot analyze this and create charts and analyze and come up with insights, right? So let's see how we can achieve this with W. So I'll open up my W public, open this up. So my file is a Microsoft Excel file. So I'll choose Microsoft Excel as my data source. And I'll come on to the folder that contains my file, right? So the file is called sales reports. So I'll click on this and open it up. And this is what my file looks like, right? So if you look here, you see these words, this is a preview of data, right? And you can see it's not really structured in the best way. So to region sales reports. So I can't even tell what the headers are. These first two rows, reports and the, the, the time period, right? If you look at the data, it's not really useful to me. It's not useful, right? It's just formatting as a report. But I want to analyze this. So in, in Tableau, right, you have this um, data interpreter and it helps you to clean up um, data, right? So Tableau tries to automatically um, clean up your data most instances it could be helpful and sometimes also it might do some transformations that are not really relevant 
So you need to just review and then see if it's helpful. So in this case, right, um, let's check this box and see the effect it has on our reports, if it improves it. So I'll click, I'll check this box, right? And here you have um, our data, right? So you can also undo, you can undo, right? I can undo what I did here. I can undo, right? These all had initially, and I can redo, right? Click on this to redo. So we went from that, right, to this. And this looks like an improvement, right, on what we had initially. So now those, those extra um fields, right, this extra field here, region and this, right, they are now out. And now I have a product ID column, right? And let's see what, what else it, 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 it did. So you can review the results, right? You can click on this to see the change that I made. If I click on this now, right, it opens up and shows you the steps that are, that, are, that are carried out, right? So the key, right? You can see data is interpreted as column headers, etc. So when you scroll down, you can go to it and see all the steps that the interpreter carried out. So in this case, right, I think this looks um like that, like a step in the right direction. But this is now our final um output. We need to do some extra cleaning, right? So the first thing I'll do here is I'll try to remove these totals, right? Since I don't need them, totals, right? I can I can I can compute them from the raw results. I don't need to have totals in my data. So I'll click on this first row. I will hold shift and click on the last row, right? So total consumer, total corporate, total, total. I want to remove them from my this table, right? So I choose three of them. I right click and I'll click on hide. So hide this field, right? And now you can see they are now removed from my from my view. So product ID down to Southwest total. Now the next step, right, is to so all these numeric fields, right? They all represent sales for different segments, right? So BI tools like Tableau is best to have smaller columns and longer rows than to have large, um, large number of columns and small number of rows. In this case, we have several columns, right? And if there's a chance that you can reduce number of columns, always take it as it will give you better performance. So in this case, all these segments, consumer, corporate, et cetera, right, across different regions, I can just combine them, right? I'll put all the segments in one column and all the values in a different column, right? So to achieve that, all the numeric fields from East consumer down to Southwest total, I will pivot them, right? So I will skip the product ID, right? This, this is a column on its own, but all the segments, I'll just pivot them. So I'll click on the first segment, East customer, scroll to the right, right? I will hold shift and click on the very last segment, Southwest total. They are now all highlighted. So I'll do a right click and I'll choose this option, pivot, right? Pivot. So I'll click on pivot and you can see, right? This now creates two columns. So all the segments are now in one column, right? While all, all the um, sales values are in one column. So I'll undo, just to show you what I have, I'll undo, right? Previously, we had 13 fields, 35 rows, right? And then I'll just go forward to the step we just applied. Now we have what? We have three fields and 300 rows, right? So we went from smaller columns, from larger columns to smaller columns, smaller, larger columns to smaller columns. And then we went from smaller rows, right? To larger rows. So one more time, right? We had 25 rows. Now we have 300 rows. We had 13 fields. And now we have what? Just three fields. So um, 
I will name this as my sales, right? Just click on the column or you can right click and choose rename, right? Rename, any of those works. So I'll choose sales as my, this column name. However, this column, right? It contains the region and the segment, region and segment. So we need to still split this, right? Split this. So we can use a space to split, right? However, you can see that um, after, after the region, so not space, then the segment, right? Total. Southwest. So south space, west space, consumer. So across all the values, right? The very last space, right, is what separates the region from the segment. So southwest, right, even though you have two spaces here, the last space is what separates the region southwest from the value, right, from the segment value. So southwest, the second or, or last space is what separates what southwest from corporate. So we'll use that to help split this column. So I'll highlight this. I'll do a right click and I'll choose custom split. So custom split. And for separator, right, I want to have a space. So I'll click on space, right, space. Split off. So instead of first, right, the last space is what separates our segments. So I'll click on this and I'll choose last. So you have first, last, all. In this case, I'll choose last. And I'll say what's last one columns, right? So create a new column and split by the last space. That's what I'm saying. So I hit OK. And you can see we now have what's a new column, right? And when you scroll down, you can see the 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 last part of, of the text, right? Consumer is what we have here. Corporate is what we have here. And for Southwest, right? You see that what's, it skips the first space and splits by what's the last space, right? So corporate is now what's here. So I can rename this also. I'll call this segment, segment, right? However, now we want to extract the region from here, right? If we split by space, right? So here I will get north. However, here I will get south, right? West, if I use the first space to split, right? While here I'll get the correct value, not. But for this value, I'll get what? South. West and consumer will not be split. And that's not what I want. So using the custom splitting, right? Space will not work in this case. So now we want to write a calculation that will help us extract this region appropriately. So we'll use what's called a calculated field, which is simply a formula that helps us create a new field. So I'll do a right click. And I'll choose this option that says create calculated field. So I choose the option. And this field, I'll call it region. So region, I'll name it region. And my formula is the left function. If you're familiar with the left function in Excel, it works the same way. So I'll choose left, right, left function. And this left function, right, so left function, it takes in a, a value or right, a string, a text value, comma, and then number of characters. So I can say, take this text and split the words, extract the first five characters or first 10 characters, right? So my text now is what's the pivot, pivot field names column. That's this column here, right? This is my text. For example, East consumer, for example, right? This is my text. And now I write comma, Character now, I want to extract what's the region, right? So what I can do is I will take the entire length of this column, right? And subtract it from what's the segment. So if I say length of this minus what segment, that will remove what's the consumer's length, right? And then I'll have what's east and space remaining, right? So here you have what's four, five, plus eight characters, right? That's 13 characters. So 13 characters minus eight characters, you have what, five characters. So I'm saying from the left-hand side, right? Split the 
extract the first five characters. So I'll extract East and that space that's there. So to illustrate this, right, I'll say what's length of what this column, this value here, right, East consumer, for example. So length of what's pivot field names, right, this column. Length of this minus what length of segments, right? Minus length of segments. This column, yeah, cool. So here we're saying um, left function, right? Look at the pivot field names and then what? Subtract the length of pivot field names from length of segments. So we'll get the what length of region, right? And then what extract what the region. That's what I want to do, right? But now, like we saw, right? This value, once I extract it, it will have spaces in it. So to remove that space, right? I'll use a function in W called what? I'll trim. Simply was re remove all remove it trailing spaces, right? So I'll put what I'll trim, this function here. I'll trim. And I'm saying what's so um let me unzoom. So I'll say I'll trim, right? I'll T R I M and a bracket, right? So taking all the values, right, from our left function and just trim it. So I will put a closing bracket here. So what I'm saying is just is once you're done extracting the region name right it contains a space i will change now what remove that extra space there right so this looks accurate right i will trim left this and this let me zoom in so you can see clearly right this is what the function looks like so i will trim left people field names and then what comma subtract people field names Pivot field names minus what length of segments. Once I have this right, I'll hit apply and then okay. And now you can see right, we have our region column. And when I scroll down right, you see that what it extracts it accurately, north and southwest. They are both extracted how I want it. So this looks okay. Now I can remove this column right. Since I have my region and segments, I can right click and hide this also. So we are almost close to what we have, right? However, when you scroll down, right, you see some fields that are unwanted. So for example, you're seeing this fields, right? Total furniture, total furniture, total furniture. These are all not product IDs. Same way also, right? You have total, you have total, right? And like I said earlier, we don't want to have the totals, right? Because we can compute them by adding the aggregate, the individual values. So when I say this plus this, right, I will get the total already. So currently I'm duplicating values. This and this together is same as this. So I can take up the totals and just have the what individual values. Later on, I can sum these two together right and get my total back so i don't need to have totals here so what we'll do is to filter out those total values right so what we can do is um come on to the top right here where you have filters right now add, add, add a filter so i'll click add and here right in this box i'll click this box i see what add click on this right add so i want to filter on the product id right so i'll choose this and i'll choose okay so you have different kinds of filters, right? General, you can check the ones you want to have, or you have white card, right? So you can just search by what's, where it contains a value, or starts with a value, or ends with a value, or exactly matches a value. In our case, right, we want to search through the product ID where it contains what total. Wherever you see total there, right, just, um, filter it out so i'll choose t-o-t-a-l right that's what i'm looking for and i'll choose exclude wherever you see total in the column name right exclude them i only want product ids in this column 
Yeah, right. You see this text total. Exclude them, right? So I'll hit OK once I have this. And you can see, right? It's showing you that what out of 2024 IDs, right? Is keeping 20 and filtering off four rows where he sees what's total there, where it contains total there, right? And then one more filter add. I want to filter on what's the segments, right? I think that's segments, yeah, segments. Filter on segments. Yeah, total. This total, I want to filter it out, right? So segments, choose segments. And I'll hit OK. So in this case, right, we can just do a general filter, right? I want this to, I don't want total. So I'll just ignore, ignore it, right? Leave total. Just choose that so that I want and hit OK. So now I'm saying keep consumer and corporate, right? Ignore total. Or better still, better still, let's do this. Let's just have this. Let's just exclude this, right? Exclude total. Yeah. And have consumer. So this is because maybe... Let's say you're adding more data, right? You might have a new segment that comes in. So that way, it just filter that total, but as that new segment there. So I'll hit OK, right? So you're keeping consumer and corporate. Once I have this, I'll hit OK. And now, right, when I scroll down to my segments, those total values are now off. Same with the idea also, right? Those columns are now off also. So this looks clean, right? And this looks exactly like what we have here. Right, product ID, region, segment, sales. Same thing here too, right? Product ID, region, sales, and segment. So I can, can go to my worksheets, right? Go to worksheets. And let's just do um some data validation. So if I, if I bring in region, for example, to this tab, and I bring in sales, right, to this table. And just one more thing. I'll come to this tab and I'll show total, totals. Show column grand totals. Yeah, cool. So this is, this is a total east sales, total north sales, southwest sales, and west sales. This is grand total, right? Let's compare these values now with what we have on, on our the data source. So I'll come back here to the reports, right? For East, total sales here is what? 11,195,720. Let's compare. For East, 11,195,720. That checks out, right? Let's look at Southwest. 10,902,776. So Southwest. Same thing, right? 10,902,776. And then the overall total, right? This is the overall total. 42,641,551, right? 42,641,551, right? So let's go back to our W and look at the value there. Same thing, so right? 42, 42,641,551. So it checks out, right? So in this case, right? Um, w Desktop was able to help us clean our data and bring it into um, our sheets to create out our reports. So let's um, go back to a slide. Let's see a different example. So let's see how we can prepare data in Excel. So we said earlier, right, for basic data cleaning, W desktop can handle those, right? But when you have really dirty data, data that is really complicated, you might need to what, do that with other tools. So let's see an example for Excel. So I have um, sample data, right? This uh, data. And you have um, sales on different days, right? This is a day. You have sales for different regions. And then you have different sales agents with your IDs, right? So you have these guys, right, with your IDs. And it's, it's, there are different sales values across different regions on this day. So for this day, right, January 1st, 2018, these are different sales across different regions for these sales persons, right? And you have a total for each of them. So this is like a sales report, right? But now I want to create a, um, I want to connect to this in W and then build 
chat of it is right so this is not in the right format right the best format for bi tools like tableau is what have it like this you have salespersons their ids their dates the region and then the sales now we can plot this right we can look at sales by region sales by dates by salesperson etc so how can we go from this to this right so if we try it in tableau so let's try it in tableau i'll just come on here and connect to a new data source choose excel also i'll choose this dirty data file hit okay so once connect to the sales value, I'll just drag sales to the tab here. And I'll choose update now. So this is what it looks like, right? And let's say I come on here and use this option like before. Use data interpreter. So I check this option. And you can see um we have salesperson not east southwest, but then these already excluding the dates, right? So notes, our final table should look like this. We want to have salesperson, ID, dates, region, sales, right? The dates, right? So you have the first January 28th as the first date. But if you look here, we've already removed that first January date, right? And then it's starting with what? Second of January 2018. So is it is already taking off important data points from my analysis, right? And that's not helpful helpful to us. So I'll just uncheck this option to go back to what we have before. So let's try to do it manually, right? So let's say I want to extract the, the, the dates to a new column and then fill that down. So I do a right click, I come on here and do a custom split, for example. So the dates, right? You have sales for a colon, then your dates, right? So a colon separates the dates. So I'll put a colon here. And I can say what's um, last, for example, one colon. So check all, all the rows, right? Where you see a semicolon separates by it and hit OK. So I expect to have what's 2018-0101. And when you scroll down, right, you have what 2018-0102 here. But now it's also retrieving what these values here. Even though you have no columns here, it's giving you the values here, right? So this does not make sense. So you find out that what um you might have to start writing complicated formulas to help you do what you want to do. And that's very cumbersome. So Tableau Desktop is not um is not the best tool for this kind of complex data cleaning, right? So in this case. The best um, approach is to what? Do your data cleaning in Excel and then bring in your table into um, Tableau Desktop. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this. Um, I'll delete this, take it off, right? Let's do it from scratch. Let's see how we got that from here. So let's do it in Excel. So so um, you can try to do this with formulas right in Excel, but I prefer to use Power Query. So I'll come onto my data tab, data tab, right? And what I'll do is I'll just highlight all the cells that contain data, right? All the cells that contain data. And then I'll come on to data. And you can choose from table or range, right? You can choose this option. You can come here also. And what's all that sources, right? From tab table slash range. So I'll choose this option, right? And it highlights the cells that contain data, right? From A2 to E. 80, right? So E80, e this, right? And then I'll, I want to check this box that says my table has header. I'll check this box that says this. And then once I have this, I'll just hit OK. Now this opens up Power Query, right? And this is my data. So, um, First thing I'll do is to extract the dates to a new column. So I'll come on here. I want to split this column by this a semicolon, right? Sorry, by a colon rather. So I'll come on here, do a right click, and I'll choose what split column by delimiter. 
right so i'll check his option and here my delimiter is a colon right a colon separates the dates you can choose left most so in our case right you have just one instance so any of this should work i'll just keep this and i'll hit okay All right and you can see we now have what a new column that extracts what so we went from this right we went from we went from this from this right to what this i now have what the the dates extracted right the rows that don't contain dates they are empty right so we have our dates all these rows here all these rows here right they are all data points for what this date here same thing here too all those dates right they are all data points for what this date so what i can do is i can just fill down right so fill down means replace all the null values what with the first non-null value above it so all these nulls that are here right i'll replace them with what january 1st 2018 same thing too these nulls that are here replace them with what this value here etc like that so i'll come on here right click and i'll choose what fill and fill down right and you can see all those nulls are now replaced by what january 1st then from here right the many nulls are now replaced by what january 2nd just like that till the end that's what i want so cool i have a column for dates right the next thing now is i want to also extract what the ids so you have james then in parentheses you have the, the sales id i want to extract the id to a new column so i'll come on here the same way right click split column delimiter and here right i don't have the um delimiter in these options i'll choose custom and i'll put my left parenthesis right left bracket like this that's what i was a place the name and the id james space then you have a what's a bracket right i put that bracket here and i'll say what's please by you have just one instance of the bracket so i'll just anyone here works right hit okay and now i have what i have the corresponding ids right in a new column however you have what's this closing parenthesis there that i don't want so i'll just replace them right click replace values and i'll say replace this bracket here right with nothing in essence delete all those closing brackets right delete them so i hit okay and they are now off so you're making good progress i have a column now for um the salesperson name their ids dates etc so let's let's now do is um let's now do is i'll just rename these columns right so I'll call, I'll call this salesperson, salesperson, and I'll call this, just click on it twice. I'll call this salesperson ID, and I'll call this dates, right? And this not, so I'll call this not also. I'll call this is. And I'll call this, so I'm doing this because I'll need to filter off this um, unwanted values, right? So I'll rename this first with I filter and you'll see why in a bit. So I'll call this south and I'll call this west, right? So this west, this south, this east, this north, etc. So once I have this now, I can now filter off all these unwanted, all, all these sales for salesperson, all these value total, they are all unwanted. So I can filter them off. If I filter this off, right, it would affect what these headers that are here. That's why I just made a new header on top, right? So I'll come on here now, click on this drop down, and I'll uncheck all the unwanted values. So I only want the salesperson names, right? So I'll uncheck null. That's not a, that's not a name. I won't check sales for. That's not a name. I want to check salesperson and check total. The rest all look good, right? So I hit OK. And now, right, I have what the salesperson names, their IDs, dates, and then the regions, right? And remember what I said earlier, right? 
for bi tools you want to have what um smaller columns and longer rows currently i have what seven columns right and 48 rows but now all these values north east south west they are all regions right so i can have all these regions in one column and their corresponding values in another column so i'll reduce four columns to two columns right if i do that so the same drill i'll click on this hold shift and click on west right so i can just right click and i'll come here and choose what on pivot columns right so i'll choose this option and you can see right we went from this from seven columns for eight rows now we have what five columns one nine two rows right so increase number of rows but reduce columns which is perfect for us so i'll call this column region and i'll call this column sales right and now i can choose the appropriate type this text text this date this text and these what's this whole number so once i have this right this looks okay i'll come on here and rename my table i'll call it what clean clean table right or let's call it sales data sales data right enter once this is done i can now load this into my excel file so i'll come on here and what close and load this right into my excel file and now right we've gone from what we've gone from this right we went from this to what this now i can now bring this into tableau and create my report right so i'll come back here and what i'll do is i'll just i'll um come on to data and i'll just close this connection close the connection and then open it again right so i'll come back here and data new source so so before this i'll save my changes right this file here i'll just come on here and save my changes save my changes yeah cool so let's come back here now and connect to the file again so data new data source right an excel file and dirty data right hits open so this is dirty data right when i when i preview this this initial file that was dirty but now these are new file right sales data this is a clean one right so i can just drag it into the canvas drag it into this canvas and these are already clean right you can see the right data types are there the right format i can come on here now and start what's creating visuals right so i can take this off all right take this off take, this, take all this off and come on to our new data right sales reports and let's see so we have um so you could say for example let's just do a simple chart right i could just put dates dates here and put sales here right and instead of year i'll just do day for example So it's showing you the values, right? Um, from first to eight. These are the values from first to eight. I can switch this also. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, this is better. So you're seeing what the values, right? From the first to the eight, how it progresses, right? And you can also do other stuff with your data, right? This is how you go from what dirty data, right, to clean data. So let's come back to this, right? So we looked at how to do some basic data cleaning in tableau desktop and for more complicated data that's dirty right you can use what tools like excel and in most times when you connect to data from databases right they are mostly clean since they've been prepared by a data engineer or database administrator they're already clean so um 
most times data from spreadsheets or from the from from websites or stuff like that might be in the wrong format. So you want to use tools like Excel, out there with Google Sheets to clean them before you then bring it into Tabu Desktop. So for this um lesson, right, we've covered the following um concepts. So we went through the importance of data preparation, data quality, data integration, data transformation, performance optimization, and data security and privacy. These are all um, reasons right, why you should prepare your data. We also looked at what the best practices for preparing data. We look at cleaning data, analyzing your data, normalize, use the right data types, amongst others. And lastly, we looked at how to clean data in Tableau Desktop and also how to do advanced data cleaning using other tools like Excel. So in the next video, we'll, we'll go through um, joins, blends, and relationships in Tableau. And I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you all for your time. Bye.